Hello there, it's me, Sari, here again, and today I thought I'd show you how to make a small book with a really easy binding technique using some of my many, many mono prints. Nowadays, I mean, I'm, not, I'm just crazy about jelly printing. I do like working with these small jelly plates because then I have the possibility of layering things without making things too much of a mess and as well not having too much space taken up by a big jelly plate but on on an occasion I actually go with the big ones as well but as you can see I do have quite a few of these mono prints and the thing is once you get started, I mean, it's really difficult to just make, just make the one you see. So I've done a bit of playing and having some fun with these. And this might be the end result. And it's possible to just browse through your book with a really easy binding system. So let's get started. I have prepared this, and uh, but I haven't bound it together yet. So in this case, I do have a front page and the back page and I just love, I really love the colour combo. I'm not sure what, what it is, perhaps it's the halloween -y touch of it, perhaps, because it, there is orange and green and I do like this. And I must say that I've had myself some fun both with stamps from All and Create because I am part of the um, guest design team at All and Create and it has been a lot of fun to make these projects so please go ahead and uh, visit the all and create facebook pages as well as perhaps look into my blog at sari's stamping studio there you can see some of my uh, creations so in this project i have used a couple of stamp sets and as well a stencil here so i hope i'll be able to show you these as well as my collection of homemade stamps that I have been having some fun with. So let's see if I can get started here. I, I think I'll just browse through the pages first so you can see what I've done. I'll talk you through it, sort of. So for this, I've actually used, in order to make that, I have used some sort of a brick assembly. And I've die-cut these out of funky foam with some dies that I've got and I've put them on some corrugated cardboard and then put on some duct tape just to have a handle to work with. So a really easy piece, I must say. In this case, I actually used a piece of styrofoam and I put some silvery uh, duct tape on it and these just glued themselves down because these are meant to be used underneath some furniture pieces so these actually make a really nice you see bubble or circular stamp and then I do have that really beautiful swirl and uh, I've die cut this out of funky foam as well and I did the same thing and it's really nice to have it I mean, and it doesn't take too much space having it like this before I used to put these temporary stamps on acrylic blocks but then the double-sided tape could actually get stuck to the acrylic block and I had a hard time cleaning them up so I just decided on going for this instead. So that's the front page and I used one of the stamps there do new things every day because I thought that this could be a really nice affirmation book for me. So it wasn't this one. Or is it hiding? It's there, in plain sight. So this is the stamp set 200 by Tracy Evans, and it's called Hope. And as you can see, there are a, a set of really beautiful flower and text stamps. So this is one of my go-to stamp sets, I must say. So now I'm ready to move ahead. So this is my front page. And you see here, I've actually used a stencil, which I haven't pulled out. This is just something that I had on a scrap piece of paper and I thought that could be a really fun spine to this book because it's going to break off the front page and the patterns and everything. So I just thought I'd make a spine like that. 
What I've done afterwards is I've made a couple of these, this sized pieces of paper. It doesn't really matter what size I've used. You can just choose and make it for your own because you don't really have to need, you don't need any measurements for this. I mean, I mean. and here's something that I made. Here's one page and here's another page. And I just glue them down uh, with a sort of a hinge. I just took a piece of paper, glued it down. So I can actually fold these like this. It's not going to be more difficult than that. For this, I did use, could it be the same stamp set perhaps? Be the change, it's hiding underneath there. So be the change that makes that makes a difference, or makes the difference, makes the difference. And as for the background, I went to town with a lot of stamps here, I must say. Here's one flower that I've die cut out of fun foam and here are some other uh, floor surface uh, rescuers or something uh, and they are white and they have a really nice texture to them so as long as I'm not covering it up with a lot of uh, acrylic paint perhaps I'll be able to create that texture effect a couple of more times. Then I have something here with a lot of stars you can see them here and there. And here is a really wonderful stamp that I've made also from a die that has the word love repeat, repeat, repeated in there. So I've put it in orange there and there. And then I have actually used one of my absolute favorite stamps from All and Create. It's a really useful and versatile stamp, which I love to put at the in the in the in in the papers that I'm using, so I have some got, got some black hearts there, and this is the set 155, and it's called Lovebirds, and just look at the beautiful, lovey dovey, animals there. There are some cats and owls and even penguins. So this is what it looks like in the back. So I think that's basically it, apart from the fact that I really, really, really love using bubble wrap. And the bigger the bubbles, the better. I've used this quite a bit, so it's starting to break up on me, but I suppose I can get myself, my hands on some more somewhere, I hope. And I've also used this. I've put some leftover pieces from die cutting something. I just put them and made my stamp on my own. And here's a feather which I've stamped in blue. So I think that's about it when it comes to that page. Or oh, perhaps not because I have another flower here which I've made like this. So basically, basically in that way I've created these pages using the same stamps over and over again. Just adding on some more paint and, and just creating a nice looking background set. Here I have some numbers which I have stamped with this one. And what else do I have here? Oh, now I can see it. I actually had this one done with some green on on white paper and it was beautiful as it was but I just felt like I needed I needed a, I needed a paper in my process and I had to go with it and it's called 77 sunflower power and it's a big mama of a stencil it's a really big stencil I must say and then I've repeated myself with the things and you know what this is really useful. It's not a regular toilet paper roll because this one is more sturdy and you can reuse it over and over again. So you could either just spray out some acrylic paint on your gel plate and pick it up or you can just spray it on top from the get-go. But you have to remember that if you are using your brayer on a textured surface and this creates a texture of sorts, it's going to leave an imprint in, on your brayer, but I suppose that having used the brayer a couple of times, you might be able to get rid of the texture of this one. But this is a really nice way to go about it. And, as you can see, I got the pattern here as well, so it's sort of hanging together. Make a difference. I'm thinking it might be in this one, or it could be in the 200 set, which, which I showed you before. And this one i love this look at the colors and it doesn't scream halloween at me 
because the light blue is there but I do really like these colors there's some green orange and a beautiful sort of petro petroleum turquoise and the orange love and the hearts my goodness I love these a lot and then I've got take each day one step at a time you can find it here as well as the make each count set which come from this one 199 it's eclectic stems all by Tracy Evans and she's a really talented girl drawing and making beautiful pieces of art so I, I just must say to you that go to the all and create fan pages and have a look see here is something a bit softer create your own magic and they also come from these sets that I've shown you before and it's your time to bloom here's another one I just wanted to have something to contrast the flower and this is something that I made just trying to cover up pages that I want that happy with so I just painted it over with some I had a, 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 a black page and then I just dragged on the leftover ink or from or, or the paint from my brayer with the blue and then I stamped with the white um, white uh, acrylic paint we made made with those bubble wrap bubbles and it just became like that and it's your time to bloom can be found in this one 140 and it's called doodled blooms and i like those blooms and as you can see they come in various sizes some of them and i like these lollipop flowers i really like them as well as that one then they are pretty easy to cut out and just to have mounted on with some 3d foam tapes and everything just to create some height and texture and here is something else perhaps the pages aren't that, that cohesive but still i went there and i used this triangular stamp from the set 10 and it doesn't have a name for it but it's number 10 anyway and it has got some really lovely texture stamps in my book i like i like that a lot and then i'm ready to go to the back page which is sort of similar to the front page because i just wanted to keep them cohesive so just to repeat myself in order to create a really easy mini album like this you're going to need a couple of these pages a front and cover of course and then a spine could be nice it's not necessary in order to keep the book together it, it might be just something nice to look at and then you're going to need an even number of pages to go inside the book and just have it these singular pages and cut out some spines or hinges i must say hinges and cut them to size when it comes to length and width and just take them together and then you're ready to go and I have sort of let's see if I have the tape to go all over because I did sort of plan for this I do believe that one could go there instead so I have sort of assembled these trying to create a story with those texts and this is the back page and I'm going to start from the back and I have actually added on some double-sided tape here. Now I have to remember to turn this the right way because I'm just twisting and turning like this. So now I have the tape here and I know that I want to get it to stick to this one. So it might be a good idea to just butt them up somehow. And why not use the surface that you're working on in order to get it to go there. Otherwise I usually like to work with an let's say on a, a, a scoreboard because I have the edges there to work with. they can actually help me get things aligned or align things perhaps I should say so I'm not sure if you can see let's see if I can do this like that so you can see what I mean this is a nice way for me to just line things up so now I have it like this and it's time to go move on to the next one and I didn't put any tape here because I have the tape here you could of course add on some glue if you wanted to but I don't think that it's going to be necessary I think it's going to stick together so now I have a nice corner to put this in and it's going to make my work so much easier just to put it like, down like that 
and then I can just browse through it and like that as well as again. I'm sorry for stuttering like like, like this. I haven't made an English video for quite some time now, so I must I must be a, a bit rusty. So same thing here. Took away the tape. And as you can see, the corner just goes as far as this. Um, you mustn't, I mean, it's not good for deep or thick projects, of course. But at, at least I can get started and perhaps I can, oh, this one, I love the one. I'm just hoping I'll be able to line it up as best as I can with this one. And I do find that some of these might not have the exact same measurements, but still I'm going to make it work. Embrace your imperfections as a known crafty man has said. I'm thinking about the Tim Holtz, of course. So now I just have to rely on my fingers and my eyes and just to put my ability to keep things sort of straight. You know what? I forgot about the back piece there, my goodness. This is just so typical of me. I, 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 I think... I'm sure you already have re realized my mistake. And depending on how sticky the tape is, I might be able to rescue it at least to the bit. You know what? I think I've just... Give it a go. Hope for the best. And now it's going to be sticky, of course. So perhaps I should leave it like that. No, oh, you know, faux pas. I think I had better not talk while doing whilst doing this. And now I just need to make sure that I get everything right there. So now I have it here. Because now I actually do need to put the spine on and I have the tape there and I could actually just put on some tape all over this. And it doesn't really have to be much more sturdy than this because I do have the front and the back piece to keep things closed and together. And in this case, I might have made a spine a little bit too thick, but I think I'll just try to put it in center. Somehow like this. And I did have, so now I need to make sure that I'm getting the, oh my goodness, I'm just really making a, <sighs> what to say. Don't do as I do. Just I'm going to add on some more tape just in case because I actually have torn it up. So I believe this one could be in this direction. And I need to find out that this is the one to go. And now it got stuck there. And it should be. Yeah, you know, this is the way to go. Now I actually get it. So I have the back piece there. I actually like it like this. So now I'm just going to try to make it look good there. Or perhaps I ought to go from this side. Hope for the best. Now the final piece. I haven't got any glue here because I've got it here and then I need to add on some tape to that bit as well and now I have my corner and I'm, che I'm checking it once more so now as I'm opening and closing the book I realize that it, this one is a bit different from this one because here I didn't have a spine that could actually hinder me opening the book completely flat like this whilst in this case I have the spine and it I have to sort of work it before it can make it open completely to the center but it still works 
and it's going to make these sounds and I'm sure it's going to give me a hard time. So if you don't want to have the hard time that I had here, you could just glue these pieces back to back and then add on the front and the back to the front and back pieces of those glue down pieces. And then I just added on some uh, tape that I have made with some jelly printing and I've also done some printing on some see-through tape that I put here just to sort of give a spine that isn't going to I mean I just wanted to give a finish to it let's say so here we are and if I would like to I could of course continue stamping in this putting in more things I could even put in some photos if I wanted to and washi tape and everything so I mean it's a nice way of making a mini album in a sort of easy way and I like the colors and everything of this so I hope you liked the the tutorial and perhaps found it a little bit um, informative and I think I'm going to sign off right now bye bye